Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I'm Zainab Abdullahi by name and we are still on the book on, of Discovering Islam. Um, anyone who has any question on our previous episode can comment on under, the, under this video so that his questions can be answered. Inshallah, today we'll be talking on the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. In the 16th century, that is CE Arabia, the majority of people were pagans. They lived in tribes, each with its own readers, leaders. Some were agricultural and cattle farmers. Others were merchants and traders, while others raided tribe for booty as a means of survival. It was only in it was into this society in 570 CE that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa sallam was born into the society was born within the tribe of Quraysh in the city of Makkah. When his parents died, his grandfather looked after him. When his grandfather died, his uncle Abu Talib cared for him. While growing up, Prophet Muhammad became known as Muhammad, the truthful, the trustworthy, as Sadiq ul Amin. Early into his adulthood, Muhammad worked for a successful widow known as Khadija, who was so impressed with his honesty that she asked him to marry her. The prophet was 25 and they remained in a monogamous marriage until Khadija's death 25 years later. Often, Prophet Muhammad would take a respite from the bustle of Makkah by traveling to a cave for a period of reflections. During one such time, when Muhammad was 40 years old, he had the voice of an angel named Jibril giving him this command, Recite in the name of your Lord who creates, creates man from cloth. Recite your Lord is the most bountiful, who taught the use of the pen, taught humankind that which they know. Quran 96 verse 1 to 5. Prophet Muhammad repeated the words until he had memorized them. The prophet rushed home and told his experience to his wife Khadija, who comforted and reassured him. Khadija and the prophet's young cousin, Ali, was the first people to understand and accept that Allah has chosen the truth, the trustworthy, to deliver Allah's final guidance. Prophet Muhammad continued to receive revelations from over 20 years. As time passed, it became clear to the ever-increasing number of people that Prophet Muhammad was indeed the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The least receptive people were the powerful Makkans who trafficked in idols and slaves. They benefited mostly from idol worshipping and pilgrim trade. The Makkans treated Prophet Muhammad وسلم, with decision with the recession. Despite this, Prophet Muhammad continued to deliver the revelation of Allah's mercy and justice, which were welcomed by the poor and oppressed. The Makkans were becoming more and more intolerant of Prophet Muhammad and felt threatened by the message by the messages he was advocating, such as the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With the increasing number of converts to Islam within the religion, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was becoming a serious threat. In the attempt to dis dissuade the expansion of Islam, Quraysh exiled the Prophet, his family, the followers from Makkans. Quraysh the san then sanctions an economic blockage on trade and association with the Muslims. For three years, the Muslims were sheltered in the valley of Abu Talib near Mecca. In conditions of hardship and hunger, the Muslims often face the ration of one day of one date a day and at time to share the date. Yet, because of the Muslim tenacious faith, the seized ended unsuccessfully. Shortly after the seized ended, the Prophet was once again faced with tribulation. The two most influential and dearest people to the Prophet died, which is his uncle Abu Talib and his beloved wife Khadija. Overwhelmed by grief, the Prophet declared that he is as a year of sadness. 
no longer being protected and supported by his uncle, the prophet became more vulnerable to the escalating pressure by Quraysh. Leaders from the distant town of Yatrib secretly invited the prophet and his followers to settle in their hometown and preach the word of Islam. Before migrating to Medina in 16, 1622 CE, the prophet narrowly escaped an assassination attempt in Mecca. The migration from Mecca to Medina became known as the Hijra, which is also the starting point of the Muslim calendar. Prophet Muhammad was received with excitement and jubilation in Medina, where he became hid head and what was to become the first Islamic state throughout the first 10 years in Medina. Muslims witnessed several occasions that were to become milestones in the history of Islam. The primary tax was building the mosques in Medina. The Prophet himself participated in building the mosques of which also housed the Prophet's home. Companions of the Prophet built their homes in close proximately to the mosques to be near the Prophet. It was necessary that the Prophet created a center where its members called the assembly. The mosque was not only a place of worship, but also a center of social, political, and educative services. The unity of prophethood was introduced. There were two major tribes in Medina, which are the Muhajirin and the Ansar. The Ansar were divided into two groups, known, and, known as the Aus and Khazraj. They fought for 120 years under a common purpose, Islam. The Prophet appeased the animosity that existed among the tribes by forming them as veterans of one another. Now you should become brothers in faith by peace. The Prophet said to his followers, By this method, the Prophet ensured the political and spiritual nature of his nation. Today, the unity of brotherhood continues to remain a tremendous act of quality of equality among muslims islam is the foundation on which all races nationalities cultures social economic levels and genders can be united by religious kinship the prophet made the institution of matrimony easy the gift in marriage that is the dowry was made moderate and intermarriages with other tribes become more accessible Social, socio-economical, ancestral descent were no longer a major factor in marriage. The establishment of marriage became a form of unity, securing and promoting Islam within various tribes and nations. Marriage not only symbolized the religious unity of a man and a woman, but also indirectly influenced and affected social and political ties. The Prophet said, he who wishes to appear before Allah with a pure soul, soul should marry. The Prophet set the example of marriage with his own daughter, which is Fatima. Although many companions has, had proposed marriage to Fatima, they were aware that the marriage of Fatima was not going to be based on affluence, rank, or descent. The men knew that the person that resembled the Prophet in matters of truthfulness spiritual merit and moral excellence will be known other than Ali. However, the Prophet ﷺ, by direction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the sweetest that the marriage of Fatima will only occur by divine order. When Ali approaches the Prophet ﷺ, to seek his blessing to marry his daughter, he was overcome with shyness. The Prophet ﷺ, encourage him to speak ali proposed by the prophet ali proposed but the prophet did not answer him immediately the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam then consulted fatima and she accepted the marriage of ali and fatima was the was was then solemnized with a symbolic marriage dowry from the migration to medina the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam faced continual treatings from Quraysh, the polytheism of Mecca and the non-Muslims in Medina. Peace and security were paramount, yet attempts to keep peace within the religion by the Prophet were futile. The opposition in Mecca mobilized its troops to demolish the newly established state in Medina.
standing firm in the face of military aggression, the Battle of Badr. The battle erupted only two years into the Hijra. The opposition in Mecca mobilized its troops to demolish the new established state in Mecca. The standing firm in the face of military aggression, the Prophet was compelled to defend Islam in what was called the Battle of Badr. The battle erupted only two years into the Hijra, which is a migration, and although the Prophet's army was far outnumbered, the trumpeted a story about the battle in the Quran reveals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent an army of angels to assist the Muslims against the Meccans. The Muslim success in the battle gave immense prestige to the infant Islamic community in Medina and dealt a major blow to the pride of the Meccans. The following year, the Meccans wanted to avenge their defeat on a hill called Uhud, west of Medina. The second major battle was fought in what has become known as the Battle of Uhud. In the beginning of the battle, the Muslims showed sign of victory. However, the insubordination of some Muslims men caused the final setback in the battle in which many Muslims were injured and lost their lives. The Prophet himself was injured and he lost his uncle Hamza ibn al-Mutallib. Although the battle of Uhud was a setback for the Muslims community, they were able to remain in Medina. Yet many other victorious battles of defense consolidated the Muslims. Hence, Islam became an ever-increasing spiritual and political force in Arabia, which also paved the way to the consequence of to, to, to the conquest of Mecca. In the 19th year of Hijra, 630 CE, Prophet Muhammad and his followers entered Mecca after a peaceful surrounded by the Meccans. The Prophet were directly to the Kaab, went directly to the Kaaba. The Prophet began to perform the circumambulation, which is the tawaf, around the Kaaba and turned towards the three main idols that had, that had been stationed above the entrance of the Kaaba. With his spear, Prophet Muhammad destroyed them while reciting and said, Truth has arrived and falsehood has perished, for falsehood is bound to perish. Subsequently, hundreds of idols were destroyed inside and around the Kaaba. The destruction of the idols symbolized the arrival and the proclamation of truth and the end to falsehood. Islam was now home. The Prophet then granted general amnesty to all the Meccans who had fought against him for 22 years. The Prophet addressed them with these words. You have been my very unreasonable countrymen. You refuted my prophethood and turned me out. My home. And when I took refuge in a far-off place, you rose to fit against me. You killed my uncle and my best companion. However, in spite of all these crimes of yours, I forgive all of you and make you free, and declared that you may go after the pursuit of your life. During the tenth year of Hijra, the Prophet performed the farewell Hajj. On the day of Arafat, over 100,000 pilgrims were present when the Prophet commenced his sermon by saying, O oh people, hear my words, for it is possible that I may not meet you at this place in the future. O oh people, your blood and property, honor and reputation are forbidden towards one another till the day you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O oh people, your women have rights upon you, and you also have rights upon them. You should treat them with kindness and love, and you should provide them with a comfortable means of life. Less than three months after the farewell pilgrim and day before the Prophet's death, the final verse of the Quran was revealed, which says, Today I, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have perfected for you your religion, completed my favor upon you, and have chosen for you Islam as your religion. That is Quran 5 verse 3. On the 28th of Safal, 11th after Hijra, at the age of 63, the Prophet died. At this time of his death, the majority of people in the Arabian had accepted Islam as their religion and way of life. 
Um, that is all we can say about the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. Because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam is beyond your ex ex expectation. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a man of integrity. He's, he is a man of peace and he is also a man of sincerity. So we should always try to copy from the lifestyle of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam. And don't forget, if you have any question under, the, under this episode or under our pr previous episode, you can comment under this video so that your questions can be answered. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.